we are going to honor our five seniors. Uh, the first one is Sammy Gregg. Uh, her number is 46. She plays low offense and has found a new talent in goal. Uh, her parents are Stephen, Roxy, and Greg. She goes to Midland High, and she's going to Michigan State to major in zoology in the fall. Uh, her favorite lacrosse mem mo memory is playing watermelon on the bus. Okay, so the next player is Haley Moulton, and she is number five. She plays home, <laughs> and her parents are Troy Moulton and Kathy Smith. She goes to Midland High School, and next year she plans on attending Santa Barbara City College and transferring to University of California, Santa Barbara, to study psychology. And um, her, her favorite lacrosse moment was her first goal of the season because the whole team was really excited and supportive, and she is the most positive person ever, so she's always really supportive on our team, too. <laughs> The senior that we're honoring tonight is Emily Medvedev. Her nickname is M, and her number is 22. She plays center, and her parents are Joanne and David Medvedev. Her future plans are to attend college in Rochester, New York at MCC and play lacrosse and study big business admin. Her favorite, her favorite lacrosse moment, it's, uh, she says that no moment can really capture all the great memories I have while playing lacrosse. Playing watermelon and pterodactyl on the bus and all the games that we play in the rain are just a few great times. I've loved every second of it, really. All right, next up we have Anna Lunsford, and she's number eight, and her position is A-wing. Her father is Kevin Lunsford, and she goes to Midland High School. Her future plans are studying neuroscience at The Ohio State University. Her favorite lacrosse moment is playing in the rain and mud, cuddling on the bus, and how the team becomes a family every year. Okay, our last senior, but definitely not the least, is Macy Doster. She's number 20, and she is an A-Wing. Her parents are Steve and Lisa Torres. She goes to Dow High, and her future plans are, she plans on going to Grand Valley State University, and she wants to be a physician's assistant. Her favorite lacrosse moment is when it was really windy, and the goal fell over on Katie, our other goalie. It was really funny. She got trapped, and she started screaming. <laughs> Congratulations. So, Carmen Ainsler seniors are Emily Bachmeyer, <laughs> Drayana Barnes, <laughs> Aaliyah Howard, <laughs> Jayla Strong, <laughs> Faith Woodruff, <laughs> and Hope Woodruff. Hi, this is Midland versus Flint Carmen Ainsworth at Northeast Middle School. Uh, this Midland team is three and five this year with three and one in the league. And Flint Carmen Ainsworth has played three games so far. This is their first year of their program. They're a club team. So it should be a good match between two Saginaw Valley League teams. 
Um, right now, Flint Carbonades are setting up in their offense. They're slowing it down. Um, uh, my name is Steven Myrana. I'm a Saginaw Valley State University girls lacrosse coach, and uh, we'll be coming to you um, cable cast on the following dates and times on Thursday, May 9th, and Friday, May 10th at 8 p.m. on MCTV channel 97 and next week on MPS TV 98. For more dates and times, you can check the Midland Public Schools website at www.mpsk12.mi.us. Looks like there was a foul on Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Midland's clearing it out of the box. Midland's ball's back after their very good pressure ride. Um, for those of you who don't know lacrosse terms, a ride is when you are defending against a clear. Uh, Flint Power, when Flint Carmen Ainsworth was trying to clear the ball out of their zone, uh, the offense tries to ride to get the ball back. With the ball right now is number 16, Hannah Fewing. Uh, she is one of Flint's uh, goal scorers. She's their uh, third leading goal scorer on the team this year. Let's see if she can make something happen from the far wing. Looks like they're slowing it down, trying to put two girls below goal line extended right now. Uh, what this does, it slows pace of play down um, against a faster team. You really want a slow pace of play. So that way you can kind of control uh, the style that's going on. Number five, Haley Moulton feeds it up to Haley Demet, who was one of their uh, leading goal scorers this year. It did not work real well. Uh, Flint Carmen Ainsworth defending it very well. And uh, ball is right now at the top of the box line for a ground ball battle. Looks like the call is out of bounds. Midland. Nope, out of bounds on Flint Carmen. I apologize. On the out of bounds rules, everybody has to stand within uh, four meters of the girl with the ball. That includes Midland players as well. Uh, that's why you see girls backing up right now. Looks like Flint Carmen Ainsworth is playing a zone defense and uh, number, and looks like number 34, Alyssa Butler, uh, who's a sophomore, caught that ball right in the middle of the eight meter arc for a great goal, pulled it back, put it, went high to low for a shot. Um, she's a D-wing, so that's great uh, sign for Midland that they're getting some uh, offense from one of their uh, defensive specialist midfielders. Haley Medvedev has taken the draw for Midland. She is uh, third in the goals on the team as a senior. She plays center. She's actually going to college next year in uh, upstate New York for Nassau Community College uh, to play the cross there. <laughs> Haley doing a good job dodging through the Flint defense and shoots and scores right along the right goal post. Another high to low shot. That just means the offense uh, player uh, pulls their stick up high and shoots it low to get the goalie to think they're going high with the shot and then pulls it low opposite corner on the goalie. Nice job by, ha by Emily Medvedev.
Number nine, Kristen Bors is taking the draw for uh, Flint Powers. This is her first game playing center all year. Midland comes up with the draw win again. And, uh, looks like they trying to get another fast break offense in, but Flint Powers, Flint, Carmen Ainsworth does a good job of getting the ball back. Notice the girls game uses a lot of cutters from the outside, opposite side high. Uh, Midland loves to draw the ball and bring the ball down to X, which is the spot below goal line extended, um, below the net, and then cutters come high on the opposite side. So that way it kind of draws the defense down low and then you feed it right above their heads for a nice open shot. Waiting for the rest call here. So it gets Midland ball again. Very nice couple of passes upfield. Carmen Andrew coming up with it on the clear. Midland looking to ride it out so that way they can get the ball back. And a very good job of running up the sideline. It's one of the advantages in the girls game. Uh, without um, no contact being allowed, if you get a very skilled player who can run it up the sideline like that, it brings your team to a major advantage. Because uh, you can go from one end to the other without having to make a pass or anything. Great ground ball by number 24, Aaliyah Howard for Flint Carmen Angel. She really fought for that for a while, never gave up on the play. She's a lot of heart by her. She's running it in. She's actually their leader in goal scorers with an outside shot from outside the 12 meter arc. 12 meter arc is uh, the highest line of arcs if you can see it on the field, um, away from the net. The eight meter arc is the one just below that. Defense has to watch out. That's a lot, a lot of three-second calls get made in there. It's a lot like the paint in a basketball uh, type setting. You can't have a defender stand in there within three seconds as long as they're not, if they're not covering somebody on offense as well. Emily Medvedev with another really good dodge. Looks like they got a shooting space call on Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Shooting space is when a defender is inside the offensive zone. Uh, offensive player has already made that her zone and a defender comes into it. She is not allowed to do that if she leads with her body. Because the players are not wearing pads, it's to protect the defense from getting hit with a shot. Uh, their goalie, Hope Woodworth, made a great save on that. It's very difficult to make a save. It's coming from eight meters away from the net, and she took a step up and took a free shot. Very nice shot, so great job by the goalie for Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Nice couple passes, really nice clear. Dodging through the defense for another nice shot. Nice job by goalie Hope Woodruff. Aaliyah Howard again with another great ground ball.
Haley DeMette coming in in the offensive zone, controlling the ball, coming down, down to X with it. You watch Midland do a lot of cuts from up top, just like I said, coming through. I think it was a three second call by Flint Carmen Ainsworth. It just means there was a girl within the eight meter arc who was not covering a defender. And was in there for more than three seconds. So Haley DeMette gets a free position shot, takes advantage of it with a nice goal. Nice bounce shot right in the net. She is a sophomore, and that is actually her 17th goal on the year and is second in goals on the team. player taking the draw, Kayla Kaiser, uh, who is a sophomore from Midland. Did a great job of winning it to herself. She's taking it in. She is actually fourth on the team in goals with 10 goals on the year. Haley controls it back to X. Looks like the offense tends to run through her a lot from Midland. What a nice dodge in there by number six, Taylor Jensen, who is, uh, that was her 20th goal on the year. She is a sophomore as well, an A wing, uh, getting some offense from their midfield positions. Looks like Midland is a very young team. A lot of their top goal scorers are sophomores and juniors. Um, first and second in goals are uh, both sophomores. Uh, third in goals are senior Haley Medvedev, and then fourth is Kayla Kaiser, who's a junior. So Kayla Kaiser's taking the draw again for Midland. Kayla fights for that ground ball, wins it again for Midland. Ground balls are really important in the game of lacrosse. Uh, nine times out of 10, whoever wins the ground ball battle is the team who wins the game. You control the possession, you control the pace of play, and you really get to control kind of uh, how the game's played in total. See Midland's doing more of a circle offense. If you notice, their entire team is actually running in a circular formation. What it does is it confuses Flint Carmen Ainsworth because they are running a man-to-man -man defense right now. Uh, so it gets them running around, and then when one girl slips up a little bit, uh, you have a free shot right around the eight-meter arc, which is a good spot to take a shot from. <coughs> Kayla Kaiser gets another ground ball, is taking it in on the eight-meter arc. It was a charge on Kayla Kaiser. Uh, charges, same thing in basketball. Defender already has position, and the offensive player runs into that defender. Flint Carmen Ainsworth with the ball at the eight meter arc on their defensive end. Try to run it up. Good defensive play by number 34, Alyssa Butler. Midland's looking like they're trying to force it down the middle too much. You need to settle it down some more. Can't try to do too much with the ball right away, you know. And time out on the field. Just so everyone is aware, um, summer is almost here. So MC TV Summer Video Camp. Learn how to run TV production equipment like cameras, edit video on computers, and how to direct a TV show or be the host of a TV show. Campers will play on Charter Cable. The camps will run Monday through Thursday, June 24th through the 27th, or August 5th through the 7th from 1 to 5 p.m. The cost is $50. The camp is open to kids ages 17 through 12. Call MCTV at 
3474 for more information. Also, uh, today, uh, the goalie for Midland, uh, Sammy Gregg. This is her, she's a senior. It's her, she's normally an attackman or a home player. That's her first year ever playing in net and second game ever in net. Um, so it's, you know, terrific. Their starting goalie actually broke her finger, uh, sadly, two games ago. So she will be out for a couple more games. Now, this is Flint's, like I said earlier, their first year as a program. This is their third game in the season. Uh, Midlands have a, had, a, had a pretty good season so far. They've beaten uh, Flushing, Heritage, and their last meeting versus Carmen Ainsworth. Um, also, a tough, tough fought game to Oxford. Uh, a couple close ones to Swartz Creek and um, to Grand Blake and Flip Powers. So they are 3-1 and one in the Saginaw Valley League this year. Uh, very nice year for Coach Jenny Biles. Lynn wins the draw again. Nice win by Kayla Kaiser. Uh, quick stick opportunity for Midland. She didn't control the ball. She picks up her own ground ball, though, makes a great shot. Haley Moulton, she's a senior. It was a first try was a quick stick opportunity. Um, gone awry, quick stick is when the offenseman, instead of catching the ball and try to cradling it into her stick, just kind of bats at it like a baseball um, to push it in the net, went awry, but she was able to scoop up the ball and uh, take it into the net. Again, how key ground ball battles are. Good ground ball win by Taylor Jensen. Very nice pass. Number 31, Elizabeth Ludwig. Nice dodge down low by Haley Demet. Great dodge from X up top. Flipped it right over the top of uh, Flint Carmen Ainsworth goalie. Holy stick. Score today so far is Midland six, Flint Carmen Ainsworth nothing for those of you uh, not keeping track at home. Uh, looks like uh, Flint Carmen Ainsworth's ball. Coming in the field, trying to run it up. Taking their offensive zone, try to slow down this pace of play that Midland's been playing. They're playing very fast pace. Midland's been going, doing a great job of controlling the play of the game. Looks like Midland's in an aggressive man-to-man -man defense. Man-to-man -man defense at the high school level, the big key is communication, and they're doing a very nice job of communicating down there, letting everybody know who has who and who has that first slide just in case somebody gets beat. Great job of recovering. Allie Howard there uh, took a great shot, actually went into the net, but uh, goal was called off due to a shooting space violation. Now uh, she has a free, sp free position shot. Takes it in, just misses the net just wide. Uh, great move by uh, number six, Alexis Colby. Uh, 
she is an attack wing, so they're getting some offense from their midfield position as well. And a uh, very nice move from Axe, dodging past their defender. Slide just didn't come just enough in time from Midland. And Alexis was able to put it right over the goalie's head. Again, goalie is a very tough position, so it is terrific that Sam McGregor uh, is even in there. I mean, second, you know, second ever game, first year ever playing goalie. It's, it's a very difficult position to get used to. You do wear a lot of pads out there, um, thigh pads and shin pads, uh, full chest protector, gloves, and a helmet. So, you know, it does protect you well, but it also does slow down your movements a little bit. And the score is 6-1 to one for uh, Midland right now. Um, Carmen Hazel was able to get on the board by slowing down the pace of play. Midland won the draw again. Midland's doing a terrific job of passing today. They're really uh, on point. Feeding it through, you know. Something every coach always tells their players is the ball always moves faster in the air than in a stick. So really helps why they're passing so well, and it leads to goals like that by uh, Lady Demet, her uh, uh, second goal of the game, and that puts her at... Uh, 18 goals on the season, and it's 7 to 1 Midland now. That is Emily Medvedev. Emily tried to dodge in there. Flint did a very nice job of defending on her. She's trying to clear it out and set up their offense. She plays the center position, which is a lot like the point guard position in basketball. It controls the pace of play going either way and uh, kind of is a key position for everybody around. Number, number six, Taylor Jensen with a great dodge in there. It's her second goal of the game. She makes a great wing dodge play. Split dodge passes her players, which is a lot like a crossover in basketball. There's a little sidearm shot right into the back of the net. So that puts her to 21 goals in the season and uh, keeps her in first uh, on the team. And that pulls the score to eight to one right now for uh, Midland early in this first half. Emily Medvedev taking it down, slows it down a little bit, trying to control the pace of play for her offense, letting her offense set up. Takes it in down to the eight meter arc, tries a little sidearm shot in the net, but uh, goalie Hope Woodruff was able to stop that with good positioning. Haley does a great ride for Midland and is able to control the ball. She's dodging through the wing, slowing it down a little bit. Uh, that was a foul on number 16 for Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Hannah Fiewig, um, you're not allowed to uh, stick your stick within uh, one meter of a player's head anywhere around. Uh, the players had, and that's what she did when she blocked that shot. Emily Medvedev with a great rollback goal. Uh, Over-pursued the net a little bit, just let her defender kind of get on the other side of her and then uh, kind of rolled around, um, similar to a post move in basketball. Uh, that is actually her third goal of the game. It gives her a hat trick for the game and 15 on the year. And the score is 9-1 to one for... Uh, Midland as we await the draw being taken again by uh, Kristen Horse and Emily Medvedev.
Midland with the ball. Number three, Bree Bowen controlling it. Takes a nice shot. Uh, how shots work. Um, looks like that was a penalty, but how shots work. Uh, just so you're aware for future. Um, there's a chase that happens after every shot. And <laughs> when it goes out of bounds, whoever is the first player closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds is the team that is awarded the ball. It's different than any other sport. Um, so on a shot, if it goes out of bounds, the offense can, can, can still control the play. Great job putting it right above the goaltender's shoulder. That's a difficult save for any goalie to make. Uh, nice goal. Uh, again, looks like by uh, number six, Taylor Jensen. Uh, gives her the, her third for the game. Very nice shot for her. Uh, you are watching the MCTV Network, a service of the City of Midland. Midland Community Television presents local produced programs like this one. For more information on MCTV, call 837-3474. Just so you're aware of how the draws kind of work. Um, I know a lot of the viewers might not be uh, um, lacrosse savvy, but uh, this ball gets put on the back part of the stick for each player. And uh, those players um, push their sticks above their heads to try to flick the ball up in the air uh, to try to direct it towards their player on the draw circle. Only the players on the circle or the person taking the draw are allowed to fight for it. Uh, three players... Um, in the offensive zone and the defensive zone are not allowed to go after the ball. Um, they have to wait till possession is made and then they can go and either defend or move on the offensive end uh, to try to fight for the ball. <laughs> Another great play by Leah Howard for Flint Carmine's where she is everywhere on this field for them. Uh, Seems like a very terrific player, always finding her way to every ground ball fighting for it. <coughs> nice pass. By uh, number 34, Alyssa Butler there to kind of start the offense up. D-Wing's job normally what she plays is just to kind of put the ball on the offensive end and make sure she's playing good defense on the defensive end. Her job is really to, you know, make sure the clear's always happening, get the ball to that offensive zone. Ground ball by the end line, won by Haley from Midland. Very nice stick check by uh, Flint Carmen Ainsworth, number 16, Hannah Fewig. He's doing a very nice job on defense for him, trying to roll off, get covered. Midland swarms on the ball, though. Flint comes up with the ground ball, trying to feed it up top. Caitlin Kogel running it up the field for Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Trying to get the ball on that offensive end for them for the first time in a while so they can try to get this, start chopping it back at this lead. Again, it is a 10 to 1 lead for Midland. Haley Demet controlling the ball down below at X, makes a nice pass up. Couldn't really cradle it in. Cradling is when uh, wrist motion action on the stick kind of keeps the ball inside the netting of the stick. Girls lacrosse doesn't really have a big pocket on their stick at all. So you want to make sure that ball stays in there nicely while you're running with it.
Flint's doing a very good job on their defensive end, making sure they switch while a player's dodging through. Oh, saved by the post. Nice shot. Good dodge by number 13, Kayla Kaiser. Emily Bachmeyer is running it up the field for the Flint Carbonates with right now. Anna Lunsford, one of the captains, has the ball below net. And nice shot by number 20, Macy Doster. Uh, but Anna was back there uh, making sure she chased the ball, so now she keeps possession of it. You notice on every whistle that the uh, refs make, the girls have to stay in the spot that they are while the, while the whistle is being blown. Uh, that's just one of the rules, so uh, keeps player safety involved. And once the whistle is blown again, the players can move. And Anna made a great pass uh, to, again, number 20. Uh, Macy Doster for the goal. Um, just sneaked by. Just snuck by uh, Flint Carmenager's goalie. Now the score is 11 to 1 for Midland. Emily Medvedev back on the draw for Midland. Looks like Flint Carmenager has a new player taking the draw as well. Looks like Alexis Colby took that draw for Flint Carmen Edgeworth. And Caitlin Kogel makes a great play on the ball there and gets the ball into their Flint Carmen Edgeworth offensive end. Alexis dodges towards the net, takes a shot. And Flint is there to chase that shot. And great job by Caitlin Kogel not giving up on the play and chasing the ball down to keep possession of the ball. Caitlin dodges inside the eight meter arc. And that was halftime. And the coverage of this lacrosse match is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation slash studio training class on the second Saturday, June 8th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The cost is just $45, which includes your first annual excess user fee learn about MCTV and how to become a TV producer and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. Call 837-3474 or come down to MT MCTV Studios in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. Learn more at www.midland.mi.org backslash MCTV or follow us on Facebook Again, the halftime score is 11-1 to 1 for Midland. Now they're playing a terrific uh, first half. Um, kind of recap on the goals. Uh, Haley Moulton, uh, a senior, has one goal. Uh, Taylor Jensen, a sophomore, has three goals on the game. Uh, Kayla Kaiser has one goal. She's a junior. Macy Deuster, a senior, has one goal on the game. Emily Medvedev, a senior, has three goals on the game. Haley Diamond, has, a sophomore, has two goals on the game. And again, Sammy Gregg's playing a great game in that uh, for her second ever game in the goal. And uh, Flint Carmen Hazard's one goal came from Alexis Colby. And um, again, this is uh, uh, MCTV Network, a service of the city of Midland. Midland Community Television presents locally produced programs like this one. For more information on MCTV, call 837-3474. I were uh, back at Northeast Middle School for the Midland versus Flint Carmen Ainsworth varsity lacrosse game. Uh, um, we are, uh, it is 11 to 1 right now, starting the second half. Haley Medvedev is taking the draw for Midland. It looks like uh, Kristen Borsch is back taking the draw. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Alexis Colby is taking the draw for Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Emily wins the draw for herself and is running it down.
We've been doing a good job controlling it through Axe. Nice pick set. I have one of the Midland players right on goal line extended. And a great shot by Emily Medvedev coming through on the dodge. Uh, those high dodges are really tough. Uh, Got to make sure you slide as a defenseman, but it's difficult when there. There's also a girl standing in the 8-meter arc um, that you have to defend as well. And also you don't want to get one of those shooting space penalties I was talking about earlier. You want to make sure you lead with your stick while you're sliding or else you will get one of those. That is Emily's fourth goal on the game. Uh, makes it 12-1. to one. Ground ball won by Macy Doster. Let's take it in, see if she can do something with it. Feeds it off to Haley, who takes a shot, but goes a little wide. Again, you are watching Midland vs. Flint Carmenians with Girls Across Match on MCTV 97 in Midland. This event will be cable cast on the following dates and times. Thursday, May 9th and Friday, May 10th at 8 p.m. on MCTV Channel 97. And next week on MPS TV 98. For more dates and times, check the Midland Public Schools website, www.mps.k12.mi.us. Looks like we had a shooting space uh, call on uh, Haley's uh, Demet's goal that took the goal away. Um, but now she gets a free possession shot from the closest spot on the 8-meter arc that she took the shot from. Uh, she decides instead of taking it in to feed it down to X to kind of slow down the pace of play. Another quick stick try um, for the Midland team. Uh, again, quick stick is like a baseball swing. You're not actually controlling the ball. You're just trying to bat the ball straight into the net. Good pass to inside the 8-meter arc for Midland. Just couldn't come up with it. And again, Aaliyah Howard is uh, in control of the ball. She is, she's everywhere for this Flint Carmen Ainsworth team. She's trying to take it down. Again, uh, looks like that was a penalty. She went into her cone area. They caught lacrosse. Can't be within one meter of the head, and everybody has to stay four meters away uh, from the girl once the whistle blows uh, to kind of give an advantage to Flint Carmen Answorth while they're running down with the ball. Alexis Colby has the ball. She does have Flint Carmen Answorth's lone goal of the day. She's trying to dodge 101. Good, nice, good pick by uh, El Aaliyah Howard. Nice shot, but uh, just a little bit outside for the Carmenades with team. Midland goalie scoops it up. Just goes out of bounds. <laughs> Leah Howard taking it in. Uh, looks like another shooting space call on Midland. Again, uh, unless the defenseman already has position in the 8-meter arc, uh, they cannot step in front of the offensive player um, with their body first. They have to lead with their stick, and then they can come in. Uh, it's just for the safety of uh, the players involved. You know, uh, lacrosse balls are solid rubber, so they are very difficult and, uh, uh, you know, um, very difficult. It definitely hurts when it hits you uh, right in the side. So they want to protect these girls when they're not wearing any padding. Looks like Flint's doing a multiple cutter offense as well. Cutters are just when girls starting out high and uh, 
sprints without the ball through the eight meter arc uh, to try to catch her defender ball watching. And also clears out great, great shot to the top left corner of the net for Alexis Colby with her second goal of the game. That was a perfect placement. Offside stick high, very difficult for a goalie to save. Uh, very difficult shot to actually take as a player, so commend her for taking that. Just so you're aware of kind of the positioning of the field. Um, and girls across, there are multiple positions. Uh, you have uh, um, three points, which are the defender players, a point, a cover point, and a third main point. Those are the three girls that are on the defensive side um, that do not cross into the offensive zone on the 30-yard line on the offensive side. And then there are a first home, second home, and third home. Those are the attack positions, uh, almost like a forward in basketball. They do not cross in the defensive uh, third of the field. Um, they can go anywhere else. And then you have uh, the midfielders, uh, two A-wings and two D-wings, uh, which the A-wings specialize on the attack side of the field, the offensive side of the field, and the D-wings specialize on the defensive side. And then you have one center, which goes everywhere. Um, you can have seven players on uh, the offensive third of the field at any time, and seven players plus one goalie for a total of eight players on the defensive third of the field at one time. So one A-wing has to stay back on the defensive side, and one D-wing has to stay back on the offensive side. It's like Flint Carmen Ainsworth is bringing it in the field. You know, feeds it off to Alexis Colby, who's going to be starting up the offense from uh, up top. Alexis Colby has it at the X position or the spot below goal line extended. Trying to get a good look at the Midland defense without being pressured too much. Comes in for a dodge. Another great shot from her. Uh, she really specializes in those uh, dodges from X. Beating her defender and then uh, shoots a um, nice high to low shot. Has the goalie thinking she's going high and then uh, places it low right between the goalie's legs. For her third goal of the game, and the score is 12 to 3 for Midland. Uh, Flick Carmenes with his uh, really came out in the second half uh, with, a, with a fire under their uh, under their bellies. Looks like uh, Kayla Kaiser, one of the uh, captains, is taking the draw for Midland, and uh, Alexis Colby is taking the draw for Flint Carmenesworth. The captains for Midland are Emily Medvedev, Kayla Kaiser, and Anna Lunsford. Um, we're really leaders on the field for uh, Coach Jenny Biles. Taylor Jensen has the ball, trying to settle the offense down at X. See what the defense is doing so she can kind of direct her offense accordingly. She's dodging in from the wing, does a nice shot, great save by the goalie. Bree Bowen is taking it down. She is one of the D-wings, so she must have been one of the D-wings that is crossing into the offensive zone. Trying to control it at X. Midland girls trying to help her out, get open for her, move off ball. Good pick set and great shot. That's a great team play for Midland. Uh, looks like number five, Haley Moulton, set a great pick for uh, Bree Bowen, who did a nice dodge from below GLE uh, into the net, right, put it right behind uh, Hope Woodruff for her first goal of the game. And she is a sophomore as well. So again, this young Midland team uh, should be definitely something to reckon with in the coming years. Now puts the score at 13 to three now. It looks like uh, 
Number 10, uh, Audrey Thomas will be coming in at A-Wing for uh, Midland. Coach Jenny Bow is doing some subbing in now. Nice scrum going on for the ground ball, and uh, Taylor Jensen coming up with the ball. Makes a good pass down to Haley Moulton, who's just taken it in an axe and will be settling the ball down below goal line extended right there. And then doing some really good movement off ball. Uh, it's very key for an offense to work. Um, they have to be doing a lot of movements. Uh, not just the ball carry, we can't be doing a lot of standing around out there. You have to be moving constantly. Across, uh, there's a reason for its nickname is the fastest game on two feet, because it's constant motion. And that was a uh, goal by a junior, Elizabeth Ladwig, uh, who was an A-wing uh, for, for this Midland Unified team. Uh, makes a nice uh, split dodge into a goal. Uh, Beats her girl and very difficult in girls across due to shooting space and some of the other uh, uh, rules to slide um, on their defender. So nice job by her taking advantage of that. Nice draw win uh, by Kayla Kaiser. Good pickup by Alyssa Butler. Uh, we'll be taking it down. Unless it looks like she's just backing it up and uh, feeding it to their to the next open girl. Great catch and run for uh, number 13, Kayla Kaiser, for her second goal of the game. Puts her at 12 goals on the year. Uh, fourth on the team for the junior center. Uh, really all started by... Uh, um, Alyssa Butler's uh, draw win. Everything, like I said, starts on the draw. You're uh, really the more you keep possession of the ball, the better you are. Nice ground ball by number ten, Aubrey Thomas. Nice catch and run by Kayla. Good pass. Nice shot to Taylor Jensen for her fourth goal of the game. For her 23rd on the season. Eight, this is their, this is Midland's ninth game of the year, so to already have 23 goals on the year is really a great feat and a testament to show her, her true lacrosse skills and her goal scoring ability. Um, and for Midland to have, uh, you know, two girls who are who are approaching 20 goals uh, in this game, and have Haley Demet, who's at 18 goals right now, is second on the team, really shows their their goal scoring prowess as a team. Another draw by Alyssa Butler. Timeout again on the field. Again, the score is 16 to three Midland. And uh, hey kids, the summer is almost here. So is MCTV Summer Video Camp. Learn how to run TV production equipment like cameras, edit video on computers, and how to direct a TV show or be the host of a show. The camps run Monday through Thursday, June 24th through the 27th or August 5th through the 7th from 1 to 5 p.m. The cost is $50. The camp is open to kids aged 12 to 17. Please call MCTV at 837 34 Seven four for more information. And the coverage of this lacrosse match is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation slash studio training class on the second Saturday in June 8th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The cost is just $45, which includes your first annual access user fee. Learn about MCTV, how to become a TV producer, and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. Call 837-3474 or come down to MCTV's studio in the lower level of Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. 
Learn more at www.midland.mi.org backslash mctv or follow us on Facebook. All right, looks like uh, they're coming back out from the timeout, ready to take the draw circle. And uh, Kayla Kaiser, who is one of the captains, is going to be taking the draw for Midland. Number six, Alexis Colby, will be taking the draw for Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Flint Carmen Ainsworth has a little bit of a short bench today. Their uh, leading goal scorer is actually out for today, so that kind of um, shows an example of the lack of offensive production that they've been putting up today. But they've really had to put up a great fight today for them. Uh, having such a short bench, it is very difficult because lacrosse is such a fast-moving sport. Looks like the rest just waiting for everybody to get set. A little miscommunication on the Midland side there, and now it's Girl gets off the field, ready to start. Wasn't that, wasn't that pretty much all set for you? It's like that was warding on number 24, Leah Howard. Uh, warding is when a girl plays with the free hand means he takes one hand off the lacrosse stick and still uses it even though it is not on the cross. Uh, the cross is actually the name of the lacrosse stick. That's why the sport's called lacrosse in uh, French. It literally means the cross. Waiting to see uh, the rest movements. It looks like it was a uh, offensive charging foul on Haley Demet. Um, looks like she tried to kind of take a little too many liberties while she was trying to get position on the offensive area. Leah Howard's chasing the ball out of bounds. She makes a great ground ball before just before it goes out of bounds. There, she's taking it in. Takes a good shot for a great save by Sammy Gregg. Nice job staying in there. Could definitely see, uh, Coach Jenny Biles told me before the game that she has a hockey background, and you can definitely see that in that save. Didn't even bother using her stick for it. Just goes right at it with her leg. There's a lot of courage on her aspect. Newland taking it up. Nice dodge from below and a good save by Hope Woodruff. Anna Lunsford making that dodge for Max. Nice pass and catch. Another great save by Hope Woodruff for Flint Carmen. She's really been peppered today. She's definitely uh, done a great job in net for Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Nice move, nice ground ball win. And smart move taking it up instead of taking that shot. Wouldn't have been a good shot for Midland to take. It's a smart move by just taking the ball off and slowing it down by Bree Bowen.
Looks like Flint Powers won that, ch or Flint Carmen Ainsworth won that uh, chase. He's scooping off the ball. Midland's going to have to ride out to make sure that uh, Flint doesn't get a fast break out of this. Try to make a long pass, and Haley DeMet makes a great play on the ball to can keep control of the ball from Midland's offense. Looks like Midland's trying to get all their girls high for uh, some multiple cuts on the opposite end. And he's doing a good job dodging in. Beats her girl for a nice low to low shot. Stick side low shot for her for her fifth, or sorry, third goal of the game. Gets her a hat trick, puts her at 19 goals on the year. Nice job for Haley DeMott. They're taking the draw. I'm getting on a draw. The center is trying to direct where the ball is going to try to give it to one of her girls on the draw circles. Great win by Midlands. Number three, Bree Bowen picking that up. Bree's taking it straight in for a great fast break goal. And that's what can happen off a uh, face off. You win that draw free. You can just take it down and take it in for a shot. And that was for her second goal of the game, the sophomore D wing. Producing some on the offensive end. That puts a score at eighteen to three. For Midlands. Last time these two teams played, uh, Carmen Ainsworth and Midland. It was at Carmen Ainsworth, and uh, Midland did win by a score of 21 to 8. Uh, Anna taken in, but again makes a great play, slows it down a little bit, and uh, re dodges. Gets a shooting space call on her, so now she has a great free position shot. Flint Carmen Ainsworth has to clear out of the 8 meter circle along with Midland. And she gets a shot straight from the center on in the goalie. This really puts Hope Wooder if the Flint Carmenage with the goalie is a really tough position. Uh, Anna Lunsford makes a great save for her first goal of the game. Uh, Captain A-Wing has been all over on the offensive end for a couple assists today. And uh, done a really good job slowing the pace of play and making sure Midland takes a great shot on net for a score of 19-3 to for Midland. And again, you are watching Midland versus Flint Carmen Ainsworth girls across match on MCTV 97 in Midland. This event will be cable cast on the following dates and times, Thursday, May 9th, and Friday, May 10th at 8 p.m. on MCTV channel 97. And next week on MPS TV 98. For more dates and times, check Midland Public Schools' website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. And Flint Carmenagers from the draw. Looks like a uh, blocking foul on Midland. And Flint Carmenager gets to take it from the 12 meter arc where everybody gets spread away. Number five, Caitlin Kogel takes it down, tries to take a shot, loses just control of the ball right before the shot though. And Midland's fighting her for the ground ball. That was actually a covering penalty on Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Covering is, is one of Flint Carmen Ainsworth's players actually put the top of her stick on top of the Midland player's stick to prevent her from getting the ball up. And that is not allowed in the girls game. Um, neither is co putting your, your cross on top of the ball while you're go going for a ground ball. Um, actually, it makes it 
so that way it's more fair so every player can kind of get up the ground ball. Flick Harmonizer makes a great pass up to Ali, Aliyah Howard, who's taking it all the way down from the 30-yard line to the offensive third. Being triple teamed right now. Tries to go through all three. Loses the ball right at the last second, though, but is in there fighting for the ground ball. Nice little flip by Aaliyah Howard and puts it in for her first goal of the game, uh, which puts the score up to 19-4 to for Flick Carmen Ainsworth. Now you are watching the NCTV Network, a service of the City of Midland. Midland Community Television presents locally pro produced programs like this one. For more information on MCTV, call 837-3474. Looks like taking the draw from Midland is uh, Kalia Kaiser, uh, junior captain. And a new person taking the draw for Flint Carmen Antwerp. Uh, number five, uh, Caitlin Kogel actually taking the draw for them. First time she's taken a draw all night. Midland wins it for him. Makes a great dodge, but slows down the pace of play when she realized she didn't have a shot. the ball for uh, Flint Carmen Ainsworth. Uh, just found out some interesting information on her. She actually just got a, f got a full academic scholarship to go uh, to Kalamazoo College, a terrific academic institution, where she will be also playing lacrosse for them. Um, they're a brand new Division Three pro varsity program out there. Uh, this was their uh, in-between year where they were playing both Division Three and club programs. Next year they will be in the Division Three, I believe, MIAA conference. Um, competing against uh, Albion and Hope and those teams. So congratulations to her on that. And again, uh, from Midland, Emily Medvedev uh, will be going to Nassau Community College uh, in upstate New York uh, to again play lacrosse. So uh, terrific. We have uh, two college players uh, out there that you guys get a chance to watch on the MCTV network. Flint Carmen Ainsworth with the uh, with the ball off of that penalty. Once the whistle blows again, the players can attack. But before the whistle, they cannot move, and they have to stand four yards away, four meters away from the ball carrier. Number twenty for Midland, right there. Macy Doster playing great defense there. Looks like ball out of bounds, Midland's ball. I know, it's pretty new. Oh, actually it looks like uh, it was a multiple penalty. Um, penalty by Flint Carmen Ainsworth and by Midland. So what the ref does is similar to a jump ball in basketball. Uh, it is literally a jump ball in lacrosse. And Aaliyah Howard uh, tries to take go through three Midland girls and uh, take a shot. Uh, very difficult shot to even get off, um, but she was not able to put it on net. Flint Carmen needs with ball out of bounds. And number two, Emily Bachmeyer uh, takes it up for Flint. Feeds it straight to Caitlin Kogel. Who can't come up with it, but uh, Jasmine Pertel picks up the ball. And it looks like that is game. So again, the final score is 19-4 Midland. Uh, great game by both teams. And uh, the coverage of this lacrosse match is being produced by uh, MCTV volunteers and staff. So 
thank you to them for producing this and great game to both teams at Northeast Middle School. And you just finished watching the Midland versus Flint Carmenades with Girls Across match on MCTV 97 in Midland. This event will be cable cast on the following dates and times. Thursday, May 9th and Friday, May 10th at 8 p.m. on MCTV Channel 97 and next week on MPS TV 98. For more dates and times, check Midland Public Schools' website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. And thanks again to uh, Midland and Flint Carmen Angel for playing a great game. And congratulations to the Midland girls for the 19-4 win, which puts them at 4-5 and five on the season.